Alice Paul, The Fight for Women's Suffrage Through a Journey of Conflict and Compromise. Picture living in a time when men ruled everything and women could do nothing. They were thought of as a man's property and sometimes were even able to have custody of their own children. Women were thought of as equal to slaves and criminals. It's a lot different than how it is today. This used to be what America was like before an astounding woman named Alice Paul stepped into the women's suffrage fight. She was born on January 11, 1885, in Mount Laurel Township, New Jersey, to William Mickle Paul I and Tracy Paul. She was the oldest of four children, including William, Holland, and Perry. She grew up in a Quaker family. During her time, women were treated a lot differently than men. There was a lack of respect for women. Women couldn't vote, got paid about half of what the men got for the equal amount of work, and didn't have the same rights. This just didn't seem right to Paul. She attended a Hicksite school in Morristown, New Jersey, and in 1901, graduated first in her class. Later in that same year, she went to Swarthmore College, which was founded by her grandfather. While she was at Swarthmore College, Alice Paul became a member on the executive board of student government and served as the commencement speaker. This experience may have helped Paul get started in political activism. In 1905, with a bachelor's degree in biology, Paul graduated Swarthmore College. She got her master's degree from the University of Pennsylvania in 1907. From there, she continued her studies in England. It was only until a bit later she moved to London and joined the Women's Social and Political Union, or the WSPU. While working there, she was arrested seven times and was imprisoned three times. She became deeply involved in the British women's suffrage movement. She participated in marches and petitions. While working, she stumbled along the path of a woman named Lucy Burns, who was also fighting for suffrage in England, working at the WSPU, and went to prison with Paul. They eventually both moved out to the United States, where they were both from. After Alice Paul returned to America, she continued at the University of Pennsylvania and got a PhD in sociology. No wonder Paul had such success in her career, being as educated as she was. Alice joined the National American Women's Suffrage Association and was immediately appointed to the head of the Congressional Committee in charge of working for the Federal Suffrage Amendment. Compromise came when Alice Paul and two others, Lucy Burns and Crystal Eastman, were instructed to organize suffrage in Washington, D.C., but in no time it became conflict. Very quickly, they gained a ton of national attention when organizing a massive women's march on March 3, 1913, starting at the Washington, D.C. Capitol, up Pennsylvania Avenue to the White House, colliding with Woodrow Wilson's presidential inauguration. About 8,000 women participated in the march, but there were also many onlookers to the parade. Some were cheering them on, but others were not so good. Some of the onlookers attacked the suffragettes, yelling hurtful comments, spitting, and physically harming them. Soon after, Paul and her followers formed the National Women's Party in 1916, otherwise known as the NWP. The NWP organized a thing called the Silent Centennials, they stood outside of the White House with provocative signs and banners aimed for President Wilson. While picketing, the suffragists were attacked by angry mobs and the picketers got arrested. Conflict got even worse. After picketing the White House, she was sent to seven months in prison. While in jail, Alice decided to go on a hunger strike, starving herself. She demanded that her other six companions, who were also in jail, got better food or else she would starve herself to death. She claimed that there were 17 murderers in the same jail as them that got better treatment, including better food, outside time, and newspapers to read, which Alice and her six other suffragists in jail didn't get. This conflict was in the newspapers and got some people questioning the poor treatment these women got and the special treatment the murderers got. Conflict was rising everywhere at this point, with Paul having to be force-fed by people in the jail hospital. During the time, Women who protested and fought the law for equality and independence were considered insane and psychopathic. Because of this, Alice Paul's sanity was constantly being questioned. 
but she eventually was released from the prison and passed the test that told whether she was sane or not. In 1917, as a reaction to the public uproar about the abuse of the suffragists in the prison, President Woodrow Wilson announced his support for the suffrage amendment. Later, in 1919, the 19th Amendment was proposed, stating that all citizens of the United States shall be allowed to vote and shall not be denied based on sex. This amendment was passed by the House and Senate in 1920 out of compromise from the states and U.S. citizens. Many suffragists stopped activism after the 19th Amendment got ratified, but that didn't stop Paul. She kept on going. She didn't think that the Equality War had ended quite yet. She began working on a new constitutional amendment called the Equal Rights Amendment, or the ERA. This amendment stated that men and women shall have equal rights throughout the United States and every place subject to its jurisdiction. This amendment was introduced to Congress in 1923 and has been worked on for a very long time. Compromise was reached in the 1940s when both Democrats and Republicans stood for the ERA. It was soon changed to the Alice Paul Amendment and read, Equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or any state on account of sex, but it took 49 years for the amendment to be passed. It was not until 1972 that the Equal Rights Amendment was passed. Unfortunately, only five years later, Alice Paul died on July 9, 1977, at the age of 92 in Morristown, New Jersey. Without Paul's help, we wouldn't have made it this far. We have her to thank for all of the equality and justice we have between men and women nowadays. It is incredible to me that any woman should consider the fight for full equality won. It has just begun. There is hardly a field, economic or political, in which the natural and unaccustomed policy is not to ignore women. Unless women are prepared to fight politically, they must be content to be ignored politically. Alice Paul.